Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Jessica, author of Dare to Dance blog. I'm sorry but for my first ever proper YouTube uh, video, I've got a cold so my voice sounds a bit horrible at the moment. Just getting over the freshest flu. I started university two weeks ago and I immediately came down with the awful cold so I'm just recovering from that. Basically I'm here to talk to you about performance I want to see in the week as you will have seen from my social media channels. I have been chosen to be a social mover with the movement uh, in association with Sadler's Wells in London. So basically I get to go and watch performances and get involved in dance pieces and I will be posting live reviews as well as reactions afterwards on the movement social media pages on mainly Instagram and Facebook, um, but there will be other channels as well. So I'm gonna leave a link to those in the comments box. So make sure you go and follow on there because you'll be able to see some of the exclusive content that I'm doing for the movement. So on that day, I got to go and meet the other London social movers for the first time, uh, which was really fantastic. Everyone's really nice. They know a lot about dance. We all have really different dance backgrounds. So it was super interesting actually. So we were there to watch Carlos Acosta's new dance company from Cuba, Acosta Danza. Um, they've put together a collection of pieces. Uh, the evening's called Debut. And it is a collection of pieces, mainly from choreographers from the Spanish-speaking world. Um, and it's just a really nice little selection. I absolutely loved the evening. I found it really great, really inspiring, even though I was dying of cold on the night my nose was streaming, I absolutely had the best night um, and afterwards we even got to attend the private reception for the company and the special guests and I was just surrounded by the dancers from the company, Carlos himself, the choreographers from the piece and other important people in the dance and art world. It was really surreal, it was an amazing experience, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, so I really want to go through some of the pieces in more depth. I've done a short video over on um, the Social Movers Instagram and their channels. Um, but I really wanted to get to talk more about the pieces because I think you guys would be really interested in exactly what the evening had to offer. I will say before I get into this, if you get the opportunity to watch these performances at any point, I know that they're now touring. Um, absolutely try to get yourself a ticket and get to the evening because nothing can compare to watching these performances live and knowing that you're part of the first audiences that will ever see this company. After seeing this I'm positive that they're destined for really great things so make sure you're one of the first to watch them. I'm working for my program here. This is all wet and soggy because I, it absolutely poured it down after the end of the evening and even though I had my umbrella I got completely soaked so everything's really wet and soggy. The um, first piece is called The Crossing Over Niagara actually it's in Spanish but I can't pronounce it so in English it's The Crossing Over Niagara. Um, choreography by Marianne Barn. I'm really sorry by the way Spanish speaking people watching this if I slaughter the names of the pieces or the dancers or the choreographers etc. I've got no idea how to pronounce things properly um, so I am sorry but the first piece was the crossing over Niagara. It opened with two of the male dancers on the stage by themselves. The music at first was super super slow and the stage was mostly dark. It was just lit sort of in a strip and it began with a series of really slow controlled movements that showed unbelievable strength and balance. The main dancer who came on first, he had quads that would make a rugby player cry. He was so big and strong but he moved so delicately and gracefully. So much control. He was like in a in a plie but on demi point extending the arms and legs out, perfect precision, perfect control and I just thought that showed so much bravery. I think to really commit to that sort of balance on stage, knowing that if you wobble or fall it's going to be really obvious, it's going to ruin it and everyone's going to notice. That was a really fearless commitment. As the uh, two male dancers got into their duet, it picked up and became more dynamic and there were these moments where they were falling 
to the stage but, and they would only put their hands out at the very last second and I always think back to when you're in classes and your teacher tells you really go for it, don't be afraid of falling, go off balance, move with it and catch yourself just at the last minute and you try to do it and it's so hard because instinctively you want to throw out your hands and protect yourself. This really demonstrated exactly why you need to be fearless when you're going for these movements. So that's something I've really taken with me into my week, into my dance classes. I want to be as fearless as these dancers are. Um, the next piece is, again, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm just going to show you. <laughs> this was the uh, Justin Pex piece, which I was excited about because we don't get to see um, a lot of Justin Pex choreography in the UK. I was really interested to see it. It was completely different from the first piece. Beautiful costumes, the dancers looked like butterflies, and they were all sort of going about in pairs doing beautiful pas de deux. It was very expressive, very pretty and lyrical. It was a really lively embodiment of the music. You had one of the smaller dancers doing some sort of acro movements in a really Nijinsky style sort of feeling. That's what he reminded me of. Um, and he would go about and dance between all the dancing couples. Sort of like a Cupid character. I don't know if that was the intention, but it's something that it reminded me of. The only criticism I'd have for that is I, I wanted to see the dancers' fearlessness and commitment be transported into some really amazing lifts. There was a real lack of lifting in, the, in this whole piece. All of the other dancing was so amazing. They had some really intricate little bits and I was just waiting for it at any moment to be carried up to a higher level and for them to be performing some really amazing lifts. And I never saw that. And as an audience member, I was just waiting for the lifts that never, that never came. So it was it was a really beautiful piece, beautiful music, beautifully staged. The costumes were lovely um, and I did enjoy it, but I just wanted something else. I wanted some lifting and that didn't happen. Um, I think we had the interval actually after those two pieces. I was really excited and impressed by it already. I was absolutely not prepared for how amazing the second half of the evening was going to be. For me, the second half of the evening really blew me away. So the first piece after the interval was Imponderable by Goya Montero, so just a little bit from the program. I think that this was one of the best pieces of dance I've ever seen in my life. It was so choreographically interesting. Um, the soundtrack, original music by Silvio Rodriguez, known colloquially as the Cuban John Lennon, sort of moved in and out of these sort of popular singing, like there was actually lyrics and then there was just music and sounds in between. It's quite hard to describe but it was really amazing. It was not the sort of music you'd normally hear at the ballet um, or at any dance performance really, uh, so it made it that much more engaging. I felt like I was watching a film and I could have just sat and watched and listened to the music. But that wasn't even the standout thing about this piece. For me, it was the innovation shown by the choreographer. Um, he used handheld smoke machines and some of the dancers would blow smoke around the other dancers and it created this amazing silhouette and a physical substance on the stage, something corporeal that they could actually dance within, hold on to and move through and the way it was lit you could really see it um, from the audience. That for me, that was really just innovative, that was amazing, I love seeing that. There was also uh, moments where the dancers held their own lights so it completely changed the dynamic of the lighting on the stage and they created shapes with them, they shone them on and at each other and at themselves and even into the audience and they were so bright you could feel like the lights really shining in your eyes and you'd be like oh it's so bright it was really really amazing um, it just added a whole other layer to everything I really want to um, get hold of some of the story that this was inspired by and um, look into this dance piece more because it really really interested me um, I actually got to meet Goya Montero after the performance at the reception um, and I told him how much I loved his piece and how much I was inspired by it so 
it was a really amazing experience to be introduced to him and to meet him and speak to the person um, who I was so inspired by in the evening. Another standout piece from the evening for me and I think for most people was Mermaid. I'm really sorry if I'm going to mispronounce the name of this choreographer. I've got Sidi Labi Cherkwi. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to write down all of the names of these choreographers and the pieces underneath so you can actually find them for yourselves rather than trying to go on my mispronunciations. Uh, Mermaid was beautiful. It had this really sort of melancholy soundtrack which at first jarred with me, I didn't like it, but as it went on it, it just went with the, um, the story and, and the dancing so well that it really it all complemented each other and it came together really nicely. The story was one of a mermaid, so the dancer, the female dancer, Marta Ortega. She was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So it began with her on the stage and she's wearing point shoes and the idea is she's sort of a mermaid who's come onto the land. She's not familiar with her body or the environment and she's scared and alone and Carlos Acosta comes in as her saviour and they dance together. She gets used to her body, eventually she takes off the point shoes. It was absolutely sensational. The dancer was so beautiful and otherworldly. She really embodied the character of the mermaid. I believed it so much. And I think the way that they used the point shoes um, in the way that she was moving, like she wasn't used to her legs, that was something completely different to anything I've seen, um, this dancing on point. Uh, that was really, really great. I loved watching that. And at moments I had tears in my eyes because it was so moving, it was so beautiful. And that piece received a standing ovation at the end because I think the audience was so moved. That is something I think especially you have to try to see if you can. Um, I'm wondering if there's going to be a filming of these pieces, um, if there's a DVD or something going to come out, if there is get it and watch it. I will because I want to watch it again. It was absolutely fantastic. I think those two pieces, Imponderable and Mermaid, were my favourites of the evening. The evening ended with a piece called Twelve, which was a really daring dance sport piece. That's how it's described in the programme. So when I read that, I didn't know what to expect. It began with the dancers. They had loads of bottles partially filled with water with a glow stick inside um, on the stage. And it began with one of the dancers throwing them backwards and all the other dancers were catching them and everyone applauded and laughed and it carried on with a really complex series of acrobatic movements and dancing around these bottles and they threw them to each other. What this reminded me of is when you've been in a dance class and you're with all the other dancers that you always work with and your teacher says you need to learn to listen to each other, be aware of each other and work together as a company. So you do games like that one where you go around and you have to call out a number without speaking at the same time as somebody else. They were doing this on the stage throughout the piece. And um, you know, if you've ever had to throw something to each other and say each other's names and throw and catch, all these sort of games. If you're ever doing those things in a class and you're thinking, why are we doing this? I'm never gonna use this in my career as a dancer. Wrong. You need to watch this piece because it was all based on that sort of thing and it was so entertaining. The audience loved it, they were clapping and laughing. And what struck me is that a lot of this piece was done in silence, there wasn't any music. And dance in silence is always something that I've been unsure about. For me dance is really an expression of the music. But this was so absorbing, at times I didn't even notice that there wasn't any music. It didn't need music. So if you're um, studying or if you're just interested in dance to silence and dance without music, I would say that 12 is a really good piece of choreography to explore. It really didn't feel that it needed music. Like there were times where it was completely silent apart from the sounds of the throwing and the catching and the dancers shouting numbers to each other and it worked really well. It was very interesting, it was very daring. There were a few dropped bottles, but not very many. Absolutely fantastic. And in that piece, you really got to see the company working together. I felt like you got to see their personality and I felt a sort of family vibe. So the, or the evening definitely ended on a high. There was applause and applause and standing ovations for the whole company. 
I think that the audience received these pieces really, really well. And I have to agree, I thought it was sensational. I think that this company could dance anything that you throw at them. I know that they're made up of half classically trained and half, half contemporary dancers. Um, but I think all of them together, they could just do anything. They were fearless. They really uh, invested in every movement. I believed everything that they did. No matter how different one piece was from the other, it was all seamless. Everything was just perfection. I enjoyed myself so much. I came away feeling really inspired as a dancer by the dancers, by the choreography, everything. It was just a fantastic evening. So like I say, if you get the chance to see this company dancing, definitely go and see them. It's really worthwhile. I think that we're going to see huge things for them in the future. And I'm really happy that I was there on the first evening that everything started to happen, their very first performance in the UK. So I hope you've enjoyed my little video. I hope I didn't talk the pants off you too much. Um, I will add links to um, the movement pages and the Sadler's Wells pages so you can check things out on there and I will put more information about the cast and the choreographers in case you couldn't understand by my fantastic Spanish pronunciation. That's all from me, until next time.